New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. <laughs> Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, give it up for NYC FC Zone, Sebastian and Keaton. Sebastian, how do you say your last name? Ibiaga. Ibiaga. Yeah. Okay, and Parks, we could say that's right, unless it's some he different pronunciation Parks. of Parks. Keaton Parks, easy, yeah. Keaton Parks, straightforward. Uh, Sebastian representing Nigeria. You moved to the U.S. Uh, in 2001, so, you know, first and foremost. Yo, shout out to Africa, man. Yo, shout out to Africa Absolutely. one time. You know, that's what we do here. So Ebro in the morning. Uh, but you guys are number one. Yeah. How long has NYCFC been around now? Uh, it's our fifth year now. It's five years. Yeah, so I think we've made the playoffs every year. Uh, haven't been number one, I think, going into the playoffs. So this is a good, good, I mean, start and good stepping stone for us. Is it true that you guys are getting your own stadium up there in the Bronx? I heard that rumor. Is that a real thing? Hopefully. <laughs> we want our own stadium and everything, and I think it would be really awesome to be in the Bronx because that's I mean, that's, that's our home, like, town, you know. Like, we're, we've are we been in the Yankee Stadium for all five years now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be awesome if we could build it in the Bronx. Um, who's the biggest rivalry you guys have right now? Because I saw a little, there was a little dust up between the Red Bulls and what's Atlanta's team? Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta FC. Yeah. Atlanta, it's just Atlanta FC. Yeah, it was, was might have got a little situation. No, ours is the Red Bulls. Red Bulls is it. Yeah, that's the this biggest one. Hudson River Derby is the biggest. Really? We have, yeah. And that does the most um, ticket sales. That does, that's, that's the game, right? When is yep. that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's the game. <laughs> um, and is there like actual real rivalry that extends to the players as well? Do you guys feel it as well? I think we feel it, but at the same time, it's just, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a competition, so the competitive spirit always comes out, and that's kind of what it comes down to. So the Red Bulls ain't out here playing dirty, slide tackling with their cleats yeah, up? Sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes. Oh, they're dirty? Yeah. More than us, yeah. Wow, sure. the Red Bull. You heard it here first. Breaking <laughs> news. NYCFC says the Red Bulls are dirty scumbags. <laughs> No, they didn't say that. Um, now, what what happens from here on out? You're leading in the Eastern Conference. What's the next phase for NYCFC, and, and how confident are you that you're going to bring this whole thing home? I mean, we're pretty confident. Uh, we have a lot of talent and, and ability in the team, and, like, going into the playoffs, hopefully we, we finish first and we get a bye and everything, and we're, we're confident we can beat anybody in the playoffs. Now, were either of you involved with this uh, beef with Toronto the other day? Ooh. This confrontation. So you guys, you, you guys lied to me. You guys are out. You guys are out here fighting. Which beef? You guys lied to me. You guys are out here fighting. MLS disciplinary committee issues fines for NYCFC Toronto mass confrontation. Uh, yeah. Sorry. That's when uh, Tati got elbowed. Damn, y'all are beefing out here so much you don't even remember. <laughs> no. Wow. I straight up asked you. <laughs> All right. I'll read the story. <laughs> um, it's from MLSsoccer.com. It sounds like a reliable. <laughs> Um, two fines to two coaches and two teams following midweek games of 20. Blah, blah, blah. The disciplinary committee found that both NYCFC and Toronto FC were in violation of the league's mass confrontation policy. I don't, I've never even heard of a policy like this. The incident in question took place in the second half stop of stoppage time um, on September 11th. Both teams' second violation of the season, meaning both NYCFC head coach uh, and Toronto's head coach, as well as the organizations, have been fined undisclosed amounts. I didn't know that. So were either of you involved in the confrontation? I wasn't. No. That's too far from it. Yeah. I don't know yeah, if we can believe anything. Yo, I don't believe point. anything either. They're both being like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I remember the incident, but I wasn't part of it. Do you have issues with Toronto generally, or is this just a random thing? It was just a random thing. Someone hit someone in the face, bloody nose, et cetera. So. That sounds violent. It was a little bit violent. I miss competitive sports, man. Yeah. I'm just saying. You it guys, are, it sounds like you get into it. Yeah. Sometimes some people have attitudes and stuff, so sometimes you got to put. Wow, so that's yeah. a complete turn of events here in this conversation. <laughs> yeah. It went from yeah, no, it's just the Red Bulls uh, to no <laughs> elbows, bloody noses, fine. Yeah, step up and get beat down. <laughs> you know all of a sudden became punks jump Snitches up. Snitches get stitches out here. You know what I mean? It could how happen. good? How good is LAFC? Really good. Yeah, we I played. think we were pretty lucky that we got to play them really early in the season, because after that they just went on a crazy, crazy roll, and they're still riding that same. Rolling. They're a really, really good team. Carlos Vela is a great striker, and he's done really well with that club. And you guys won't see them again until playoff time. Potentially yeah. the championship. Yeah, just yeah. the championship. Just the championship. Yeah. Yeah. So there could potentially be a situation in which uh, NYCFC is playing LAFC in the championship of MLS as the Yankees are playing the Dodgers, or close to it, in could the happen. World Series. This is could all happen. there, yeah. It's all lining up right. Feels good. Uh, and are you guys like, uh, do, you guys are on yes the Yes Network, mm -hmm. and uh, does it feel like people are tuning into the games? Do you feel like this thing's grown? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think so for sure. Um, I mean, we've had, a, a, like, great fans all year. Um, but, like, especially as we've been doing good, like, re- doing well. And then since we beat Red Bull at home and everything, I think, like, the fan base has just, like, gotten bigger and louder each game. And I think it's been awesome, yeah. I'm it's amazing sure. how that happens, right? Winning games. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fans around. like yeah, winning winners. You're right. 100%. No, but it does. In New York in particular, there's so many <laughs> options that, like, even as popular as the Yankees are, like, the you have to win for people to be there consistently all the time. There's just too many options in New York of things to do. That's true. You know what I'm saying? If you're on Columbus, yeah, there's limited options of what you're doing on a on a Saturday afternoon. But here, it's a different story. Um, now, Keaton, you've been on the team how long now? Uh, That's my first year. Yeah. First year on yeah, this, yeah. And, and is your first year in MLS also? Yeah, yeah. I'm on loan from uh, Benfica in Portugal, so I'm just here for a one year loan. One year loan. That's how you guys. Describe it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Makes you feel crazy. It feels <laughs> nuts alone. Um, and this is your first MLS. Uh, well, you just scored your first goal too already. Right. Finally. Yeah, yeah, right. It took you long enough. <laughs> yeah. How'd that feel? I felt good. I was getting a lot of trash in the locker room because I've had chances and easier Easy than yeah, chances. easier than our last game, and I finally scored one. So I'm still gonna get trash for sure, but like, <laughs> it, it helps. Where did you Where did you grow up, Keaton? Uh, Dallas, Texas, or Frisco, Texas. Okay. Of Dallas, yeah. Now, what's the difference playing in Europe and playing MLS for you? Um, just a lifestyle, I guess. Uh, like there, everything is about soccer or football. Like everybody lives a football life. Even the fans, like the people who don't play, are their whole life pretty much centers around football and soccer. So, um, yeah, like here, I mean, there's so much more to do and other sports and other things to be interested in and like and enjoy other than soccer, but. Um, yeah, just like the whole lifestyle there is is always soccer. And Sebastian, would you ever play for the Super Eagles? Have you ever thought about going to play for Nigeria? Yeah, I think that's, as I got older, I think that's what I wanted to do is hopefully get called into a camp with them. I think that would be one of the biggest honors ever to play at, and I like their jerseys too. They're jerseys fun. are fire. fire so. Sebastian, growing up, you were always a, a huge soccer fan? Yeah. So yeah. you were playing as a kid? Yeah, as a kid. Uh, yeah, born in Nigeria, I played there, I loved it. Uh, my dad played in college as well. Oh, that's and, dope. Yeah, and so I've always, it's always been, you know, around me. And then I moved to the States in 2001, lived in Oklahoma and Texas. And I started playing, like, basketball and football, but I always just always played soccer. So oh, it's just always dope. been around, yeah. And what's the process to get called to these different leagues? They just, agent, phone rings, like, how did, like, for you to go play in Nigeria or even the MLS Portugal situation, how does that work? Yeah, just connections. Uh, I had a coach back home who who knew people in Portugal and who brought me there and and got me tryouts with different teams and stuff. And then I met an agent. So it's just all about connections and then getting your name in the door and then and then it just spreads from there. And were you always on the track for the U.S. national team? Like, had you known for a while that you would end up there? Um, I was always hoping, of course. Uh, I never, I didn't play for any of the youth teams until the under twenty team in twenty fifteen was my first call up. So um, yeah, like. I guess, no, it wasn't 2015. It was, like, 2017. Um, but, yeah, like, I was always hoping that I would play for the national team, of course. But, yeah, it just it took me a while to... So how long have you been on the national team? Uh, since... So 2017, I went to the under-20s, and then 2018 was my first first team call-up. And was it, were they already... Had we already not qualified, or was it the end of qualifying? Yeah, this was after after not qualifying. So then there was, like, a big... There was, like, all of last year was a cycle where they were bringing in a lot of new players and stuff just to try out and, like... And get a feel for the team and stuff. So that's like when I got my call up. What's the general tone around the U.S. national team? I think you because just get right to it. When y'all gonna start winning some games? Because like, I mean, uh, I mean, so no, seriously. I mean, if, if the idea of not making it again would be such a ridiculous, unmitigated disaster. I mean, for soccer in this country, it would be. I, I'm not. I mean, I was like, I was heartbroken. I mean, it's it's funny too because it's not like I love the state of our country right now, but I was still really excited to root for Team USA, and so not being there is a blow. Just, is there a lot of pressure that it's like that is ob- absolutely not an option next time around? Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's like pressure necessarily, but we know that like that we should be qualifying every World Cup, every cycle, and um, I mean like yeah, that's we're definitely gonna be focused on on doing that this next cycle around because yeah, I mean it, it is like it shouldn't happen. We, well, and then we and the then you get into the more controversial topics, right? About like the U.S. women's team not making the same amount as you guys, and they win. Right, like they, I, they do win. all the time, Got it. nonstop. Yeah, yeah. I heard of them, and and it's almost like, like I, look, I forget where I was just <clears> recently, <throat> and I I even said, 
Oh, it was at a it was at a panel discussion in LA where the bunch of advertisers and I couldn't understand. Like as an advertiser who supports the US men's team, it feels like there would be a mandate like, yo, y'all should lose sponsors if you don't win. And the women should get all the sponsor money. But, like But that's at that's asking for advertisers to not reflect <clears throat> what society's actually like. To be leaders of some sort. Yeah, you're asking advertisers whose job is to find money to set the tone. Pe I know it's asking a lot. Yeah, I mean, America but I'm just saying, like, it sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> you know, you guys but not winning any games? You get no sponsors. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Unfortunately, the, unfortunately, people would rather watch men lose than women win. And that's a societal question, not an advertising question, right? Yeah. Ultimately, like, what's wrong with us? Now, this time around, it did feel really good. Like, the women's team did feel like it had a lot of, a lot of momentum. Yeah. Were you guys pretty dialed into the Women's World Cup? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even though, they, obviously, the things they're fighting for are, you know, just common things that I think that they should get. But we're always rooting for them. We always want your nation to win no matter what, you know. World Cup, Olympics, or whatever. So it's great to see them win and and get that trophy, and and it's I mean it was pretty cool. Uh, do you guys have any relationships with girls in the national team who talk trash to you and say what's wrong with you? Why can't you hold this hold this right here? <laughs> <laughs> or do they like pull up to you guys' <laughs> cribs no, like, know. yo, you want to hold one of these? I know you had one of these before. We got a few. We can loan y'all a couple. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta kind of expect it, right? Like, yeah. because a, I mean, a, America is the type of nation that has phenomenal sports on many levels. Look, the U.S. men's basketball team is about to catch it. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, it's a problem. This is not good. Yeah, yeah. That, that should but, never happen with the talent. That, like, like I don't you, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the talent in the U.S. I, you, you have no space to talk about happens, anybody. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you, 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 got, like, you have no room. Right. Well, no, no, but no. it's different, though. It is different. Why? We're the best basketball yeah. nation in the world. Not by anymore, far. clearly. Nah, no, we are. Though. We turned out. They invited 40 people to play. Everyone said no. Yeah. That's the problem. 40 people were asked to play on that team. And they all said no. And then the Olympics come around. They're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm ready now. And then meanwhile, you have poor, you know, Kemba Walker and Donovan Mitchell and the guys who said <laughs> yes who were like, really? Now y'all want to come play? You didn't feel like being bothered last summer when we got our ass whooped. So it is hard. I mean, we are not the best soccer nation. It's weird because when it comes to women's soccer, we are the best nation yeah. and men's that we're not. It's just a strange cultural phenomenon I can't quite understand. Well, I think it, it's more an indictment of women's sports around the world, right? Because women are allowed to play here young. And when you look culturally around the world, they don't embrace young women participating in athletics. And we do. Right. And that that's, is, and that's the, the shift. True. Right. Unfortunately, men are allowed to play around the world, which doesn't help us too. <laughs> Yo, if we could just get the other countries to stop letting the men play the young sports. young men can't play sports over there anymore. Let, let us catch no, up. We, we, would, we would dominate. <laughs> well, listen, we are, we're busting your balls, but it's only because we, we want the Because we want you to goddamn <laughs> win. We do. We do. So we're putting the pressure on you. But listen, apply what you're learning here at NYCFC. Number one team in the East. Um, how soon do the playoff? What's, what's the playoff uh, start date? We have, what, three more games? Yeah, I think October 19th is the first four, round of four, playoffs. Four, four, okay. Yeah, four more games. Dope. Well, this is very exciting, man. Good and luck. um, and one last question before we let you guys out. We know you have limited time. Um, how the pay scale for has it as MLS catches steam because it definitely feels like there's several teams. Atlanta's selling out. Portland sells out all the time. NYCFC is doing better and better. Red Bulls do very well. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think Galaxy sell a lot. They do very well as far as ticket sales. That obviously helps everybody's salaries. Correct. Well, he's. I think he's saying he ain't making a lot of money like you because he's new. I mean, he plays in Europe, so he's definitely making more money. But <laughs> um, no, yeah, I think as the league grows, you know, the salaries grow as well, and I think right. that's the biggest thing. Uh, so, I mean, like this is actually a crazy year because it's the end of the CBA. So we're trying to like make a new one and do all this. So it's about to be a bunch of negotiations. So it'll be interesting to see what. So you guys might go on strike if they don't come off that bread. Possibly, yeah. So wow. it'll be interesting to see what gets, I guess, written up and where the league goes from there. Because like you said, the league is growing, and it's it's in both parties' best interest to keep keep going. So, right. Yeah, it'll be very better. Pay better players. More players want to 
you know, stay here instead yeah. of going over to Europe and other places to play, right? Yeah, for sure. That paper in Europe's crazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up, Thank man. Sebastian Keen, thanks for being good sports, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us.